Hi, I'm Danny with BuyRadarDetectors.com. Here today with Bob Rosagna. Bob's the president and head of product development with Veilcorp. And Bob has brought his arsenal of laser guns and he is going to talk to us a little about laser guns and show us how they work. Um, Bob, why don't you tell us what you've got here? Sure, okay, if uh, you're looking here, I think to your right, you'll see this is a, a Dragon Eye Compact. Uh, That's this, the gun everyone's talking about. Yeah, everyone's talking about that. We'll get to that in a second. Then this, uh, this one in the middle is the LTI SXB, which is interesting because it has built-in Bluetooth, which can tie to your, cat, uh, your iPhone or smartphone, where when you get somebody's speed, you can actually get an image hmm. right to with, with the car and the speed and the distance. So that's an interesting uh, device. Then we have the Pro Laser 4, which is Custom's new gun, uh -huh. uh, and that's replaced the Pro Light and the Pro 3, although you're gonna see a lot of those guns still in, uh, in use. But uh, the Pro 4 uh, is a very much used, uh, Custom has had a long relationship with police departments, with radar guns and stuff like that. So they have contract, uh, a lot of contracts throughout the country. So you so, see this gun quite a bit. Oh, often. I'll see when I drive in Maryland, Virginia is standardized on this gun. Uh, so you're going to see a lot of these guns in the field. Uh, yeah, there is a lot of talk about the Dragon Eye. It's an interesting gun, but the reality is while jammer companies and online groups like to really talk about the Dragon Eye, the fact of the matter is Dragon Eye only has like a 1.3% mm. market share in so, the wild. Not a and lot of penetration there. A good bit of that is in... At, at Georgia, which is where they're based out of. So mm -hmm. a lot of talk about it. There's a lot of fear mongering going on with this gun, but you're going to see the Pro Laser 4 much, much more common. The Pro 3, the Pro Light, they're very much used in the field. And the good news for uh, uh, all the drivers is that Vail does extremely well against the Pro Laser 4. And you're going to hopefully see that later today when we do some real world tests. Also the LTI. Now the thing with these guns is these are technically like fourth generation guns. Uh, they have better optics. Uh, and I think a lot of the reason for that is because they're designed to be handheld. And when and that's how police target. They mm -hmm. do not do tripod mounting, as you may see some of these sets. It's just not realistic. Not so real laser well. guns are operated very differently than radar guns, is that correct? Yeah, they the end result's the same, but radar you know, works on Doppler shifting, mm -hmm. you know, so you can equate that to if you've ever heard a, an ambulance approaching or a train coming, you'll hear the compression of either the sound or light just ever so slightly as you come uh, uh, closer and as it approaches, there's a Doppler shift to the higher frequency if it goes away, it's the lower frequency. And it's basically a direct measurement, radar is. The thing with radar is it's not entirely precise. It's a lot better. Mm -hmm. but it's not entirely precise. So precision is the reason that police departments would want to use laser over radar? Yeah, especially in higher density areas. If you have four lanes, when I say precise, I mean as far as targeting, not mm -hmm. in results. So each of these guns, if you uh, can picture looking through a, either binoculars or through a scope where you have your, what do you call a reticule, and you can put that reticule, that dot, right on a headlight or a license plate which are the primary targeting points, which happens to be where Vail goes. So at 1,000 feet, a laser laser is 18 inches wide or so. Right, it's a very thing? narrow point of infrared light. Now, yeah. and what the laser guns do is, this is a time to flight. So light is fixed, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and it measures the time to get the reflection back. And we're talking, you know, nanoseconds or something. But they're so sensitive that they can take discrete measurements over a short period of time and then uh, calculate what your uh, speed is. The primary laser guns are ranging devices, but then what they do is they take multiple readings over a period of a discrete period of time, and you can you can you can calculate the speed. Now, so that's how they work. Given those benefits, why do you still see so much more radar than laser? What are the drawbacks to laser guns? I guess they're not ideal for for every scenario. Uh, I think. The, the, probably the largest reason or the biggest reason is just because radar has been around so long. Mm -hmm. Police departments have so much invested in radar. I mean, for example, New Jersey State Police have been using X-Band. Mm -hmm. Now, they're finally transitioning away to KA-Band, but for decades they ran X-Band. Mm -hmm. And I talked to a, a police officer at a barracks about that. Why are you guys using X-Band still today? And the reason is 
because they have so many units, they are trained, they have all the equipment, even though it's not even actively made anymore, uh, they can service their own guns. So, uh, you know, just radar is very popular. It can be used in a moving scenario, so you can run it in your car while you're driving. So you have to be laser fixed exam. in a fixed position when you're using these laser guns. Correct, and they're pretty much used by, you know, as if you're doing stationary radar. The other thing is it doesn't alert to detectors as easily. There's really only one detector that I found that can pre-alert to that laser, which you can probably guess what that is, uh, which is a Valentine, frankly, okay? Mm -hmm. It's just a wonderful gun. I mean, a wonderful detector. But every one of these guns is designed to be instant on, and it's very hard to detect by other radar. I mean, other radar detectors. So that's really the advantages, I think. And these are handheld. Is weather a problem for laser guns? Used to be, mm -hmm. and they have inclement mode. Mm -hmm. But that can actually happen with radar to an extent. And some of these guns do have inclement mode that reduces the range. But, you know, does an officer really want to be out in the rain writing tickets? Usually not. <laughs> I don't not. think so. So, uh, and, and, you know, a lot of times, too, interestingly enough, police will have both radar and laser. So they'll have radar in the car for moving, and then they'll run... A laser, and it's very also very interesting. Occasionally, you'll have a radar detector that will be, it's not so uncommon actually, to pick up radar because the officer has his unit on while they're using laser. So you can get a radar warning. And get a laser ticket. Get a laser ticket, right. But if you have a detector, you, you'd be alerted to the officer's presence. So, uh, you know, I, well, I, they're, they're still very popular guns, uh, and some states like using them more than others. So it, I guess it all depends on the contracts. and whether uh, police departments are renewing or the state is renewing contracts and then getting new, new guns. Well, Bob, we appreciate the introduction to laser guns. Remember, if you have a radar detector, be sure to pair that radar detector with laser veil stealth coating. With veil, you're going to reduce the effective range of these laser guns and uh, give you much more time to react to your radar detector warning and hopefully enough to save you a ticket. Appreciate your time, Bob. Thank Our you. Our pleasure. It's great always seeing you.